The 1929 Grand Banks earthquake, also called the Laurentian Slope earthquake and the South Shore disaster, occurred on November 18. The shock had a moment magnitude of 7.2 and a maximum rossi foral intensity of VI strong tremor, and was centered in the Atlantic Ocean off the south coast of Newfoundland in the Laurentian Slope seismic zone. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Earthquake. The earthquake was centered on the edge of the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, about 400 kilometers (250 miles) south of the island. It was felt as far away as New York City and Montreal. The quake, along two faults 250 kilometers (160 miles) south of the Burren Peninsula, triggered a large submarine landslide displacing 200 cubic kilometers or 48 cu mi. It snapped 12 submarine transatlantic telegraph cables and led to a tsunami that arrived in three waves. Newfoundland, Canada and Saint-Pierre and Miquelon had the largest impact, both from the snapped 12 submarine cables, and the tsunami. This was Canada's largest submarine landslide ever recorded, up to 500 times the size of 1894 St. Alban subaerial slide. In 2002, Natural Resources Canada and the United States Geological Survey created an intensity map by using the revised modified Mercalli scale. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Tsunami The tsunami waves had an amplitude of 3 to 8 meters, 9.8 to 26.2 feet, and a run-up of 13 meters, 43 feet along the Burren Peninsula. It destroyed many south coastal communities on the peninsula, killing 27 or 28 people and leaving 1000 or more homeless. All means of communication were cut off by the destruction, and relief efforts were further hampered by a blizzard that struck the day after. It was recorded as far away as Lagos, Portugal 4060 kilometers, 2520 miles away, 647 after the earthquake. It took 223 hours to strike Burren, Newfoundland, 340 kilometers, 210 miles from the epicenter and only 2 hours to be observed in Bermuda 1445 kilometers, 898 miles. This was Canada's largest submarine landslide ever recorded, up to 500 times the size of 1894 St. Alban landslide. Tsunami travel times demonstrate the strong anisotropy of the propagating waves. The waves reach open ocean islands such as Bermuda in about 2 h hours mean speed approximately 700 km per hour and the Azores in about 4 h approximately 630 km per hour. At the same time, tsunami wave speeds are much slower in the direction of the North America end coast. They require 2.7 h to reach Halifax, approximately 230 km per hour, and 4.2 h to reach Atlantic City, approximately 380 km per hour. Topic: <laughs> Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island had felt the earthquake. The intensity was rated at the time at IV, slight tremor, VI, strong tremor on the Rossi Foral scale. In Pay, it ranged from an intensity of three, weak, V, moderate. Topic: <laughs> San Pierre and Miquelon. In the then named French Republic Overseas Territory of Saint Pierre and Miquelon, about 18 kilometers (11 miles) west of the Burren Peninsula, people were awakened around 16:30 h by the earthquake that lasted approximately one minute. At 17:20, the tsunami reached the island of Saint Pierre, submerging the docks. The worst damage was reported on the island then named Isle aux Chens, meaning Island of the Dogs, till 1931, now known as Lilo Marins, the Island of the Sailors. The tsunami hit from the south, rising above the height of the south bank that protects the south coast, flooding the lower part of the island. It damaged and moved some of the houses, there were no reported injuries or casualties from the islands. The quake's intensity on the island was V moderate tremor VI strong tremor, and on the revised modified Mercalli intensity scale IV light V moderate. Topic. Aftermath. It took more than three days before the SS Magal responded to an SOS signal with doctors, nurses, blankets, and food. 
Donations from across Newfoundland, Canada, the United States and United Kingdom totaled $250,000. There was never an accurate official list of the victims produced by any branch of the Newfoundland government. In the report entitled, Loss of Life, the Honorable Dr. Harris Munden Mosdell, Chairman of the Board of Health Burren West, reported, The loss of life through the tidal wave totals 27. 25 deaths were due directly to the upheaval. Two other deaths occurred subsequently and were due to shock and exposure. Later research attributed an additional death to the earthquake. In 1952, American scientists from Columbia University put together the pieces of the sequentially broken cables that led to the discovery of the landslide and the first documentation of a turbidity current. Scientists have examined other layers of sand believed to be deposited by other tsunamis in an effort to determine the occurrence rates of large earthquakes. One sand layer, thought to be deposited by the 1929 tsunami, at Taylor's Bay was found 13 cm below the turf line. The occurrences of large tsunamis, such as the one in 1929, are dependent upon deposition of sediments offshore because it was the landslide that made the tsunami so powerful. The deposition of such a large volume of sediments will take a while before there is enough to form an underwater landslide the same size as that in 1929. Topic. See also List of earthquakes in 1929 List of earthquakes in Canada List of historical tsunamis